In these tournament reports, I generally like to feature the play of a range of different players, but I make no apology for once again looking at a game by Magnus Carlsen. Today he played against the Chinese player Li Chao, and this was something quite remarkable. So, today Carlsen decided to play some pretty heavy theory. He played this move, this is this anti Grunfeld move, and it means that, well, black could transpose into a King's Indian like this, but that's a Zamish variation. Um, but Li Chao wanted to play a kind of Grunfeld position, and he played d5. So this was exchanged, and now e4, and you can see that by not playing knight c3 then black doesn't have the option to exchange on c3 so that means there are more pieces on the board and as white has a space advantage then that should be favorable for white because black is more cramped of course it's not so clear black still has pressure against white center but generally this variation has a pretty good reputation for white although yeah it's very double-edged you might recall that this line was featured in the anand gelfand match in 2012, and, and there Gelfand played e5, and they reached a, a very sharp position after h4 and so on. Uh, and there have been loads of games in that line uh, since then, well, even before then as well. Uh, but Li Chao went with knight c6, which is also uh, one of the other main moves here. So Carlson castled. Well, I mean, it looks all very nice to put the, the king on this side of the board and, and go for a, a kind of brutal attack like this. But, you know, white's king isn't that secure. There's no pawn here on c2. Only two pawns in front of the king, and the king still has to sort of duck into the corner as well. And it will take some time for these pieces to get into the game. I mean, black doesn't have any pawns in the middle of the board, but he has considerable piece activity. So it is a very double-edged position. Now, Li Chao went for f5, which is one of the main moves here. So chipping away at white center. And yeah, if, if black can exchange and maybe get the bishop to g4, then well, he has excellent piece play. So that's why generally white plays e5 here. This is well known to theory. Now, there are pros and cons to this move. I mean, one obvious advantage is that you blunt the bishop on g7, so this is not much of a piece. But on the downside is that black has some control over d5 and can use this for perhaps a knight, perhaps a bishop. So knight b4, this is all very logical looking at this square here, and this has all been seen before. Knight h3, white needs to bring out his pieces, and this looks very sensible. And here, the main move for black is bishop e6. This has been seen on, on many occasions. And then, well, here's a typical game. This is a game that Ivanchuk played with white, and he simply grabbed that bishop on e6, played the bishop to c4 and then attacked on the king side. I mean this knight looks very beautiful but actually it can't really move because of the that bishop pinning. So you know, Ivancho was slightly better there and went on to win a nice game. But Li Chao played a different move here which he'd obviously prepared queen e8. Now according to my databases this has not been seen before. So the queen has influence in this direction but also it might want to step up to f7 to look down this diagonal. So now Carlson started to consume a fair bit of time. You know he spent almost 13 minutes over king b1. Well that looks sensible. To tuck the king away to guard a2. It's kind of a waiting move as well to see what black does. Li Chao played a5 very quickly, you know, use under a minute to play a5. And it means that it's not so easy to drive this knight away. If, if white plays a3, well, this can just be left, uh, because if it's taken, 
then Black can recapture with a pawn and open up the A file. Bishop E2, okay, connecting rook, so just calmly developing. And C6 and rook C1, very calm moves from Carlson. He's not panicking about Black's demonstration on the queen side. And I mean, these are sensible moves, of course, but in a sense, he's waiting to see how Black commits himself here. So if bishop e6, then the knight will come to f4 to hassle the bishop. But Li Chao put the king in the corner. Well, this is a controversial move, uh, as we'll see in a minute. And Carlson, well, he was still thinking a long time over each move. Um, king a1 is also uh, slightly strange, you know, putting the king in the same line as the rook and black's king as well. Um, well, in fact, king, a, king a1 is very, very far-sighted, as we're about to see. It looks slightly strange, but let's see what Carson's idea is. So bishop e6 finally came, and now knight f4. Now queen f7. Now, if Carlson wanted to, if he wanted to kind of take a bit of the heat out of the position, he could simply exchange on e6 and play h4. And it's, it's a little bit similar to, to that Ivanchuk game, actually, that, you know, if black does occupy d5, then the bishop might well come to c4. You know, you have some attack here. Quite possible. But instead, Carlson cranked up the pressure. He played h4 which of course allows black to take on a2. So bishop takes a2, this is what happened. I mean, this is quite incredible. Obviously that can't be taken because the queen comes down delivering checkmate. Um, extraordinary. So now we see the point of king a1. Basically he preempted this and doesn't want to have to slow down his attack because there's no check. But, I mean, incredible. And now h5, Carlson just you know, ignores what's going on on the queen side and continues full steam ahead on the, the king side. It reminds me a little bit of his game from yesterday where you know he just threw these pawns at his opponent's king and opened up lines and and you know didn't bother slowing down on the other side of the board at all. But he's basically judged that his attack is going to be faster than black's. Well let's see. First of all if black tries to keep the position close with g5 then knight g6 is very strong. Obviously that can't be taken because of a nasty discover check and winning the queen. So king g8 and knight takes, and, and this should be good for white. So Li Chao played king g8. Carlson opened the h-file and now again full steam ahead g4. It's incredible how, I and mean, this almost seems like a slow motion attack. Um, white simply wants to trade on f5 and crack open the f file, uh, the, excuse me, the g file. If black were to exchange on g4, then the problem is this opens up this diagonal and, well, let's say bishop b3, then bishop d3 is just a really strong move, um, threatening g6 and perhaps queen over as well. Should be winning for white. <clears throat> so black plays bishop b3. And now bishop d1, <coughs> it's a very nice move. The other reason behind playing g4 was to open the second rank and prepare queen h2. But as I said, it feels you know somewhat slow motion, but after bishop takes bishop, queen h2 is just a killer move straight away. <coughs> so black played a4, but queen h2 anyway, and the queen came down, check. And, well, <clears throat> there's perhaps more than one way for white to play this position. But the move that Carlson now chose was, well, really, really beautiful. Um, you might want to have a little look. Um, what would you play with white here to continue the attack? Well, let me just have a quick slow for tea. Carlson played d5. Wonderful move. All, all these pieces, all black's pieces here can take that pawn. Well, obviously, queen takes, you, know, you lose the queen. 
Uh, this is a beautiful interference move. Beautiful. First thing to note is that, well, if, for example, bishop takes, then bishop takes knight, and this should be simply winning for white. And the next thing to note is if this knight on b6 takes on d5, then the bishop no longer covers e6, and e6 is deadly because this sets up a mating net. So, for example, if the queen moves to f6, you check, give a check on g8, and then rook h8 and with that pawn on e6 the king cannot get out beautiful stuff so that's the point of d5 wonderful wonderful move the game went knight c4 knight g6 and again this move e6 now the point of knight c4 was to actually set up um, a kind of desperado sacrifice and once again queen f6 will be met by queen g8 and same kind of mating routine. So Li Chao tried a3. I mean, this looks really scary for white. You know, all these pieces pointing in the direction of white's king, but actually Carlson can deal with this. Well, first of all, of course, he took a queen with check. That's, that's a pretty good bargain. And now his queen is way offside, so that needs to come back into the struggle. So he played knight e5 check that was taken and now queen f5 check again and here carlson simply returned the queen but at the end of it the bishop on b3 is on pre so in this position white is uh, a piece up yeah he's a piece up and well black's attack has evaporated a, a couple of last shots for black he took the rook on c1, but actually still with two bishops and, well, an extra pawn, and that's a pretty good extra pawn. White is, uh, two bishops against a rook, I should say. White is completely winning this position. If that pawn is taken, then d takes c6, opens this line up, and, well, actually, black's king is in massive trouble here. The game ended, king c8. Magnus took on c6 and then f4 and in this position black resigned pawn can't be taken because the bishop takes the knight and of course if knight takes g4 then bishop e6 check forks king and knight so in this position i mean white's pawns are just rolling through um well what can i say magnus just played with such extraordinary energy um and yeah just a wonderful game. He now is the sole leader in the tournament. After five rounds, he has four and a half out of five. There are a few players on four out of five, but he is sole leader with four and a half out of five. Tomorrow is a rest day in Qatar. So, um, well, I'll be back soon with more reports, but in the meantime, happy Christmas.